Most of you as an orthopedic surgeons are used to do orthopedic surgery in a fixed protocol manner. While now we want you to start thinking out of the box and this is how you can do it. I'll shortly introduce you to what 3D technology is. So 3D printing is a small part of 3D technology. Uh, do I have a changer here or it's just a laser? How do I change? Okay, thank you. So this particular conference is on the theme of upper limb injuries and reconstruction. However, I'll be introducing you to few examples, not only of the upper limb, but also of the lower limb. We as an orthopedic surgeons should be op optimizing the anatomy, physiology and the biochemistry of any pathological state the patient comes to us in. And we should give them solutions which will add quality to the patient's life and thus will add quality years to your patient's life. That is what should be the aim and the motive of every orthopedic surgeon. Also, most of the times you must have seen because of the off-the-shelf implants that are available to you, at times you are giving them a compromised management because you don't have something which you think if I had this implant, I could have done this surgery better. However, now that imagination can come into reality because of this technology. I'll just introduce you to what this technology is. Uh, Dr. Abhijit uh, made my task much simpler by introducing what 3D is. Friends, have you ever seen how an implant is manufactured? Any one of you can tell me how an implant is made. How, do you, how, how is the screw made? How is the nail made? How is the plate made? Uh, if anyone can speak, uh, well and fine in the talk because we can have this a little more interactive. Prelad, I can ask you also. Yeah. Have you seen uh, any orthopedic implants being made? Production. So have you ever thought of it? Any one of you? So when you get implants coming to you and there are so many implant guys here, how, how is that implant made? So till now, most of these implants are made by CNC technology, what is it's known as subtractive technology. So you have a metal or a rod or a plate and you have a computer aided design for that particular plate or a rod and then it's the, it's the machine that cuts out the metal and it gives that particular shape or a hole that is required. Exactly opposite to that is additive layering, what we call as three-dimensional printing. So here there is a powder. Dr. Abhijit showed you a video of a cocoon, right? So what happens is any powder, it could be a powder or a liquid, which is into a 3D printer and the computer-aided design that is given, it will lay down layer by layer, either from top to bottom or from bottom to up. And that is how anything that you imagine can be taken on a computer thing and then it can be printed. And that particular technology now has become a boon to orthopedics. How are we going to apply that in our orthopedic surgeries? What are the surgical challenges? And what anatomical solutions are we going to give is what we'll see. So this is a metal printer that I was talking to you about. It's about a size of an MRI machine. This is a metal printer and in which we put in titanium powder which is imported, which is biomedical grade and that titanium powder can be then added in a layering structure by heating it through laser technology and or you can use an electron beam and you can create any shape that you want. So the advantage of using this technology predominantly is customization. When you go to a tailor, you get a shirt which is made to you as per your size. And in this case, you have a patient and you can think of giving him an implant or a plate as Dr. Abhijit was saying in one of his onco cases where he could contour and get a plate made of the size 
length, the number of holes, as well as the contour of the plate which was exactly fitting over the tumor. So such similar examples can be there in trauma, there could be use in plasty and there could be use in pediatric orthopedics when you do a deformity correction. What is 3D? What, what do we understand by that? It's, it's nothing but it's an information. Most of you not only do x-rays but all of you also do CT scan for most of your patients, right? Now what do you achieve out of that? You get an information which comes to you in three dimensional and that gives you an imaginative judgment as to what is the disorder or a disease of that patient and how are you going to approach. Imagine taking that information onto a software and that software now will start enable you to do virtual surgeries. So you are going a step ahead. You take that CT's DICOM information, put them into a software and you start to play with that software. And that software will now enable you to do that particular surgery of that particular patient beforehand actually doing a surgery on the patient. So that's pre-operative plan. You can design an implant. I'll show you a few implants which are designed by me. And the most important thing is integration. Most of you find challenges if you're an arthroplasty surgeon thinking in terms of how do we integrate a metal to a bone. Aseptic loosening is a big issue. So you really are aiming at having an integration that should happen of a femoral stem when you're doing a THR. So integration is very important and that problem also is solved using this technology. So the surgical challenges, one is really expressed by Dr. Abhijit when he was showing us all the examples of onco-orthopedics. Second is pediatric orthopedics as well as adult uh, uh, orthopedics where we have deformities. So when you have deformities, you need deformity correction and none of this deformity is in a single plane. These deformities are in the X, Y and Z axis. Most of the times we usually tend to do the correction only in one plane. We do not do the correction in all three planes. So hence, we need to use 3D information to do the correction in all three planes. Complex fractures and aseptic loosening. Preoperative plan I told you. So this is something about osteointegration. These are the ways in which the metal can be osteointegrated to that of the bone. Uh, whenever you do a CT scan, it's the DICOM or a CAD file that comes to you. You need to import that into a software. We have a language which is known as STL. Then we do something which is known as segmentation and on segmentation we can do design, planning, we can prototype and finally we can print an implant. These are the steps that is done. Let me show you some examples. So what you see here is something in an upper limb trauma. Where you can see at the global level there are people who have printed scaphoid. There's a first metacarpal that's printed. There's a lunette. There's a radio ulna defect again printed with a trabecular pattern. There is a distal radio ulna joint. Again it is from actus but this is what you can make again through a 3D printing solution. You can see a humerus, a complete humerus with the distal end of the humerus which has a trochlea and a capitulum which is exactly the same as that of a patient. So you can do a hemi. Another example. This is a live case. It's a lunet replacement which is already done in India. Scaphoid replacement is coming. CMC joint replacement is coming. What you can also see is a metacarpophalangeal joint. This is joint in prototype. Will be shortly coming to the market. Arthroplasty, upper limb. You can see that there is an upper limb humerus. You have a trabecular base and you can give, I, I was seeing one arthritis solution very similar to this. Radial head. What The radial head that usually you put is not a patient specific radial head and that results into capitular chondrolysis. While if you do a patient specific radial head, usually you will be avoiding that cartilage damage at the capitular level. A humerus, distal end of humerus, you receive a lot of trauma patients with distal end of humerus and you end up having a fixed elbow. There is no need to wait. We can give them a solution as far as distal humerus is concerned. 
distal end radius. You can give a solution to distal end radius too. Small joints of the hand. You can print IP joints, you can print metacarpophalangeal joints, you can do first CMC joint, you can do a wrist arthroplasty. Using this technology, creating a joint which is patient specific. Think about defects. Whenever there's a defect, defect in the acetabulum and revision surgeries, whenever there's defect using a tibial plate, again revision knee, you have been using augments, you have been using cages, but now you can think in terms of making one single component which is patient specific and it is defect specific. Not only that, you can create a trabecular there, you can create an osteo integration there. Look at this case. A bad, very bad revision, fourth stage revision, then the surgeon didn't know what to do. We had to do a segmentation, we had to create a, 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 a component, acetabular component and that acetabular component helped uh, to give an anatomical outcome to the patient. Deformity correction, as I have given you an example. This is Dr. Taral Nagda's few cases in pediatric orthopedics where he is using the jig. He is operating upon the bone model. He is doing an osteotomy before end and then he actually performs it over this. This is a case again one of our friend Kamlesh also exhibited by Dr. Uh, Abhijit just now where he has performed a moshe's osteotomy again doing a preoperative planning making a jig out of uh, 3D planning and then doing the surgery. To reduce the surgical time from 3 hours to 45 minutes while the anatomical correction and precision was as good as 100%. Now this is interesting. This is something which we made for a patient for a GCT in lower end of tibia, young female. It's a tibial plafon. This is how it looks. A 3D printed tibial plafon. This is another case, young female who had a sonk lesion in the posterior one half of the lateral condyle with an FFD limp and inability to walk. We created an isolated posterior one half of the lateral femoral condyle. Let me see if I have few videos to play. How will I play this video? Can, I, can someone help me? Can you click one of them? Yes. So this is uh, for that uh, same patient. Can you click the other one? Uh, where we can see the yeah so this is four months of follow-up at this patient where we have given uh, the tibial play fund operated by dr. Manny in Delhi you can see it is metal on cartilage and you can see the congruency can you play this video this is of the same patient where the posterior one half of the lateral condyle was replaced. It is a patient specific implant. See the congruency of the tibial condyle over the femoral condyle. See the entire range of movement. The patient is one month. Patient is painless with full range of movement. Can you play this, the other one? See the movement in the under the tibial play font. Uh, you can see the Give me one minute, yeah. Again, few things that can be done by 3D technology is giving patient orthotics. And now we can make a bionic hand out of giving patient specific uh, solutions. This is something going ahead of what is uh, shown by uh, Dr. Abhijit, now you can use the virtual programming of a surgery and then you can use hollow lenses and that, that is known as mixed reality. So the virtual planning, when it is overlapped using hollow lenses over a patient, you can actually perform acetabular placement, you can do a TKR and you can do a THR. I want you to play this video just for two minutes, one minute, yeah, fast. Can you play, put in the volume? Yeah. Give me, this is the last slide. So what you see here is a hip whiz by Arthro 3D, a very good friend, Dr. Manish Shah from Ahmedabad. He's working on it. He has done large number of knee series using hollow lenses. This example is that of a hip, where a preoperative plan is done using 
the software and here you can exactly plan out the acetabular inclination, the antiversion, the size of the acetabulum. When you are planning an uncemented one, you will know how much is the surface area that is going to be there. If you also can work out as to which is going to be the best size and the best fit of the acetabular cup. So friends, thank you.